we started running into um, housing issues. And this is, I mean, early, early on, like 91, 92. And um, uh, that's when I kind of reached out to the Disabled Rights Action Committee, you know, because you start looking. And back then it was the phone book. I packed my wife and my three kids up and we went down to a meeting and it was at a warehouse and um, they had a big garage door and the whole place was filled. There must have been a hundred people with disabilities there. You know, it's interesting to meet so many people with that were having the same issues that we were. Um, it was really grassroots. It was really street level. That's why I'm always so overwhelmed and in awe of not only Barbara, of course, but and others who showed up and to the strike line and continued to be on the strike line day and night for whatever it takes, going back to DC and going to LA or wherever there happens to be a, a uh, action going on. We set it up so that Barbara Toomer ran a Catholic funded program on the Crossroads Center. This was between 85 and probably 89. She would be in her chair with, you know, in her, her um, her assisted chair and she was uh, very articulate and very convincing and non-threatening. She used to chain herself to UTA buses. That's what most, a lot of her arrests for. And then she traveled with National Adapt. We had different uh, organizations that kind of worked uh, Utah independent housing you know, things like that. But pretty much when it came to uh, standing up for people's rights with disabilities, Barbara was one of the few people that would actually get out there and get her face in front of everybody and tell them this is where it's gotta stop. People didn't like to get on the bad side of Barbara. She just had a way about her, but it's just her personality. She just had a way of, she, she could stare you down and just a glaze and make you want to back off and never want to cross her path again. Everybody was working for the same thing. I mean, everybody had their own version of the same story, where they or somebody in their family had been discriminated against or diminished, had their life diminished because they were disabled and there was no accommodation for that. There was no effort to make folks with disabilities part of the larger community. And that was really the fight, and I think that's really what everybody had in common when you get right down to it. They wanted to be part of the larger community, just like everybody else. People don't necessarily realize uh, just how capable we are. You know, um, back in the 504 era, when we were fighting for 504, and they did the Capitol steps, they climbed the Capitol steps. You know, we had full paraplegics crawling up those steps. Um, I think it's nice to see that just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean you are wheelchair bound. Everybody being together, all for the same cause, and all these different disabled people, and they really, that's quite a grueling trip to go there and do that march and go up to the capitals and, and here's all these people that have disabilities and they're doing it. It's not somebody else doing it, they're doing it. And that gives me goosebumps to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we blocked State Street as a way to gain Senator Orrin Hatch's attention. We managed to get a large group together and blocked State Street right in front of his office. And there's an amazing picture of Barbara in her wheelchair with a car trying to barrel through. And she doesn't budge. She didn't even flinch. You know, when you're talking about disability, you're talking about people who live in the every, live everyday lives and they have everyday problems, the same problems that anyone has coming and going. It's just that there's, their problems have been double, tripled, and quadrupled because they have a disability. Disability is kind of weird sometimes because you can be disabled from the moment you're conceived or you can become disabled the first time 
six weeks before you die when you're 90 years old. And it can happen any time in between. All we wanted to be is part of the system, not a specialty part. It's, it's funny if you step back and you say, okay, the fight's over and we can sit back and relax, you can't. That's what I've found is, is it's never over because people tend to just um, wipe it all away and, and forget that anything ever happened. And they'll start creating a society that um, doesn't include people with disabilities. So. So again, coming, coming full turn, every system needs a direct action, confrontation system and drags it for this town.